I want to speak today before we have, we'll finish off with a short time of prayer. I want to delve into an, an area I have spoken many times into, and it is a, an area of great uh, personal interest to me. Uh, recognizing that everything we do, uh, recognizing that whether we are praying, whether we are preaching, whatever we are doing holds absolutely no value when we lack a sense of purpose. The church has been attacked since time immemorial for being a place where hopeless people gather. And Christians have over the years galvanized that mentality by many times substituting brain for spiritual. There's never been a day when Highlanders was playing where there was someone who had to ensure that the people rejoiced in the winning. The only time people like that have arisen in a soccer match is when the team was losing. And a person would stand and he would encourage the people and say, let's edge the team on, you know, let's get the team going. In other words, speak faith we are losing. Do not behave losers. We may be losing, but stand up and speak as victors. But I have to sit at home. And I have to give instructions to protocol and ushers and say, this section here. I don't want any people that are not responsive to the word of God. I, I have mentally to, to say that because I don't mind seeing unresponsive people sitting at the back. It doesn't matter. It's natural. It bothers me when they come anywhere near the front. Why do I have to think like that? Manchester United does not hire people to encourage people to whip the emotions of the people. And any soccer player will tell you that we were carried by the fans. Because of the way the fans kept on singing, church people are the opposite. You have to encourage them when they are winning. And if they are losing, we are not even talking. Nobody has ever worn a Highlanders jersey that had blue and white. It's in church where you find the mixed colors. A man of God was talking to me recently. A crisis arose in Harare with someone I am acquainted with because in their business they sell liquor. And other Christians rose up to say, no, this is wrong. I'm not going to go into the, <laughs> the intricacies of it and try and consider the 
force and they're against. All I'm going to ask is what does the Bible say? If the Bible is not clear on a matter, then you go to secondary doctrine. Secondary doctrine is implied doctrine. Is, any, is anybody hearing this? So the thing may not have been said in a particular specific way. For instance, the Bible says that your temple is the, your body is the, how did you manage to go and pierce your nose and put something on it? How did you go start writing on your hands and on your feet if you actually knew that it was the temple of the Holy Spirit? If you could, can you go to the parliament of Zimbabwe and start doing graffiti on the wall? So how did you do graffiti on yourself? If you understood that your body was a temple of the Holy Spirit. Is anybody getting this? I mean, you don't even have to go far. Are you aware that in Japan, you are, I think China as well. You, they see tattoos on you, you get arrested. Because tattoos are worn by gang members. It's only in this age where tattoos became fashionable. How did we get here? How did it become possible that we have a Bible that teaches and is explicit and straight on every matter? But yet, in the church, there are debates. There is no way in the Bible where there was a wedding between a man and a man. Where it was a practice, God destroyed the city. So how is it that today we have homosexual pastors standing on the pulpit? We have homosexual worship leaders leading some of the cities some of you have in your homes. How did that happen? How did it become acceptable? When the, the first Kodak camera was launched, it raised great mayhem in the United States. People could not believe it. They were banned from the swimming from the beaches, the sea. They were banned. Those days, women wore dresses whilst they were swimming. If the woman was revealing, she wore almost like, like a dangari that came up to about there. Today we have nude beaches. Then if they are not nude beaches, the person is wearing clothing that leaves little to the imagination. It became normal. About 1947, is it? Or starting there was when Hollywood started on a mission to normalize homosexuality. They started putting, just showing men holding hands, walking. And then came to this, then they put it on cartoons like The Simpsons. And many of you still don't know, those of you that have your children who are in charge of remote controls, that your children are actually being taught homosexuality in cartoons. The level of violence on video games is unimaginable. How did it become normal? How did it become normal that people in church 
could live like sinners but pray in tongues. How did we normalize it? Because everything that is done slowly, slowly, just introduce it just a little at a time. I still want to throw up when I see two men holding hands. Literally, and this is not, I am not using a, 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 a euphemistic term. No, I feel literally, and you, you, you think you can ban me from your country or whatever you like. I am simply describing me. I am not describing you. So you don't have to be worried about how I, I mean, I don't eat some particular types of food. You are not upset about it. So you, 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 you have no authority over how I feel. How did it happen? How did it happen that people can go to church? I still cannot relate. I was watching on Sunday. One of the people sitting at the front arrived, start of the message, Bible here. Once in a while, then I think there was only one instance where the Bible was opened but they never found a chapter. How is it that we have poor neighborhoods and people growing up in those poor neighborhoods and yet their lives are not changing yet there is everything around us that says that is not the standard. How did it become possible? <laughs> Someone came the other day and said, this person bought something. And he, they, in fact, there was two of them that were talking. They said, when we saw what the person bought, we knew you didn't see it. Because there was no way in hell that thing could have passed in your eyes. How is it possible? So let's talk about that. Because the only way you and me are going to be able to prepare and walk into a different dimension of life or be able to succeed in life is purely predicated upon what I am about to just share with you the thought process the preparation the mindset the it, 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 we we fail not because an occasion came that was greater than us we fail because where we are sitting right now we fail we succeed tonight tomorrow Next week, not because we are lucky. We succeed because we are ready. What did they say? Luck is when? The day opportunity kisses preparation. That day is a day called success. Is anybody getting this? So prayer. Is it possible to pray and achieve nothing? Yes. Yes. Absolutely yes. The Bible says, you have not because you ask not. Because when you ask, you ask amiss so that you may spend it upon your last. In other words, the motive of your prayer was wrong. As a result, if the motive was wrong, the prayer was wrong. Yeah, when you see this, you find one of our idiotic 
girls has fallen pregnant. I didn't say made a mistake. There was no mistake. Nobody falls pregnant by mistake. You planned it. And if you planned it with someone you had no business planning it, you're an idiot. It's getting quiet here. Are you sure you're getting this? There is a trillion others who have gone in before you made the same mistake. How, how, how come you didn't learn? How, how did you not learn? Which one of us here does not have a relative who made that mistake? So, so how did you so intelligently manage to go and make the same? Are you still here? So the whole thing is planned. It wasn't that the person there was a day and then they were they made a mistake. One week, one year before they fell pregnant, they were not prepared. <laughs> they say over 98% of people that win millions in the state lottery die as paupers. As a matter of fact, last week, the person who won an American lottery is a 21-year-old boy. He won 450 million. So out of 450, he'll most probably get away with maybe 250. The text on it doesn't play. So I most probably get away with 250. So you then envy him. Whereas you should cry. When you find yourself buying a lottery ticket, you will never be ready for anything. Ngoba ufuninto se fetcha fetcha. We are on what basis, what principles are used to prepare for a sudden 250 million? Is anybody getting this? There's no such preparation. But a person can be poor the rest of their uh, rest of their lives, but they have plans. They are just looking for opportunity. The day, the, I mean, you, you have people here whose lives will be changed by $5,000. $5,000, their lives will never touch them again. You have people here, $100,000, they'll die as paupers. The difference is preparation. When someone saw a dollar when two people see a dollar, what they see is not the same. Another one sees money for a packet of chips. <laughs> Another one is seeing money they are going to put aside because they had Makaya chickens in Binga are $4. <laughs> so every $4 they see a chicken. 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 The other one is saying a Russian and chips. <laughs> Please take your seats. Let's go. Come with me. When you pray, what happens? I've had to enjoy this. This week assured me and taught me to this day we're not even there yet. What is teaching me is absolutely awesome. I have had to deal, I'm having to deal, rather, I'm having right now, I'm having to deal with issues and matters that just all cascaded and landed on my lap one time. And we are talking huge issues concerning the ministry that I'm having to 
deal with. So now I have to laugh and preach my gospel to myself. Look as the things come, land. And I start laughing and I look at them and I went on my knees. I said, Father, that's a testimony. That's a testimony. That's a testimony. That's a testimony. All of them, as I see them, I know, beyond doubt, every single one of them is a testimony. Please take your sense. If I didn't have that mindset, I wouldn't be here today. I've been praying almost nonstop. Not, we are not talking prayers of desperation. No. Acknowledging the Lord's greatness. The power of preparation. The power of preparation. We are going Wednesday next week will be the, the culmination uh, of um, the month of foundations and instead of communion uh, this Friday we are actually going to have the communion uh, 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 Wednesday uh, next week and because a week, the weekend is a totally different story and I don't want to, uh, to preempt anything but the one thing I am very knowledgeable about is the fact that the enemy is going to come and hit you before your time of coronation. In other words, before the time of your anointing, before you are supposed to be anointed, the enemy has to come and hit you. Why? So that you can then go and despise the anointing. But if you do come to the place and get to the place where you are anointed, then the enemy will come with ten times more force than before you were anointed. Because now it's no longer an issue of stopping you. It's an issue of intimidating you. And if the enemy can either stop you or intimidate you, you will take 10 years to do what God ordained three months for you. Please take your seats. The power. I am not hearing you at all. So let's give, let me walk you through. Number one. Develop a sense of purpose. It is impossible to prepare when there is no purpose. When you have a journey going somewhere, you prepare. I got upset on Monday, got to the airport, only to find my daughter is six point something kgs overweight. My brain can't I can't relate to that. Can't relate to it. I, how do you end up with 36 point something kgs in a suitcase? That's madness. That's absolute madness. Was there preparation? No, there wasn't preparation. Because preparation ensures a seamlessness in your life. Let me say that again. Preparation ensures a seamlessness in your life. It does not mean you are not going to have challenges. It does not mean that you are not going to be attacked. What it means is you will walk out. The Lord Jesus Christ in the book of, of Luke, the Bible says they were so upset with him, they took him to the brow of the hill meaning a cliff so that they would throw him over and kill him. Do you know what he did? He turned and walked through them. They were, they, they, were, they were giving way. They were shouting. They were singing. We are going to kill him. The one they were going to kill, they were saying, and he walked through them seamlessly. 
That's what the power of faith does. Please take your seats. Let's go. So, number one, develop. Say that one more time. I'm not hearing you well. Why? Because purpose forces discipline. I wouldn't pray the way I do if I didn't have the vision I have. Purpose defines character. Without a sense of purpose, anything is fine for you. You just eat anything that is available. You go anywhere because you can go. You spend time with whatever company is available. Why? Because you have no sense of purpose. But when there is a sense of purpose, purpose tells you, you can't go there. You don't fit there. Purpose tells you, this person here, no. No, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Purpose tells you, you know what? I don't like this particular thing. And purpose says, tolerate it. <laughs> I don't like it. But purpose says, uh, so what does tolerate mean? Learn to like it. When we got married, moved into our two-bedroom flat, I thought to myself, you know what? This is absolutely beautiful. We're a flat in Famona. Next thing, I had to take a relative, not had to. No one suggested it. We just looked at it ourselves and said, you know what? Let this person come and stay with us. Was that someone thing I wanted? No, 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 no. I'd have preferred just to be with my wife at least for a year. After that, from that first person who came to live with us, we have never lived alone for 20 years. Six years. What happened? What I tolerated became a habit. Are you sure you understand this? Go a couple of days and we are having dinner just by ourselves, which is something that just started towards mid of last year. There are four people at the table. Monday night, Monday, yes, Monday evening, after the extraordinary prayer, got into the car. That was the first time I discovered both Tariro and Juanita had gone. Was not aware that they were gone. Got into the car, and I could feel someone was missing. So I asked them, no, 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 all of us are here. But something, there's just something about it to say, no, there are people who are missing from here. So how did you go from a person who wanted to live by themselves to a person who must have people around you? Purpose. We have kept more than 20 Tswana students in our home. Not paying, not buying food. None of them, not even one of them, has ever been in touch after they went back to their country. Purpose. Are you sure you're getting this? So develop! Because purpose breeds discipline. Can anybody understand this? Number two. Rehearse for a bad day. 
Always ready yourself to become, or rather, ready yourself because sudden success is as good as failure. Sudden success is just as good as a, a businessman who calls himself fancy names from Harare was always posting things on social media, insulting people, calling them names. No more. The National Prosecution Authority, the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission, is watching him. Why? Sudden success. But sudden success makes you abnormal. What kind of a man displays like 40 pairs of takes, takes photos to go and post on social media. What, what kind of... You, you are a boy who is pretending to be a man. Some of you are still not getting this. Post pictures with piles of US dollars on a, on a table. Then go and post it on social media. Bill Gates has never done it. Warren Buffett, who gives away over two billion dollars a year, has never done it. When <laughs> intelligence, you know why? Sudden success. Do you know why sudden success? You never worked for it. So what do you do? You prepare yourself or you rehearse. Talk to me. Talk to me. Don't watch me. Rehearse for a bad day. So how do I do that? I rehearse for a bad day by rehearsing for a good day. Okay, watch. 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 So, I'm not sick. How do I rehearse for a bad day? By his stripes, I am healed. Greater is he that is on the inside of me than he that is in the world. Father, I thank you that this is the temple of the Holy Spirit. This body is sanctified by you. The grace and the anointing of Jehovah rest upon this body. I am talking to this body not because it's sick. If you never spoke to your body when you were well, when you are sick, you have no power to talk to it. That is why many people fail. They never rehearse for a bad day. Uh, please take your seats. Let me, let me take you somewhere for a, a moment. What's this? So, I would say take the Pajero when I still had a Pajero. And I drive to the Matopos. I drive, you know, to the mountains. I know there are people who still don't really understand my fascination with the Pajero. It's because I didn't read the review. I wrote the review. That's a big difference. There is no car that you can do with what the Pajero does. It is not as stiff as a twin cab. A twin cab is just a glorified lorry. Or not, not lorry, a, a, a scotch cart. Now, those of you with twin cabs, God bless you. You will accompany me to the farm so that I can go and carry some things. A twin cab is just a glorified scotch cut. Why? It is a dust bomb. If you don't know what a dust bomb is, that's your own lookout. Now, when you drive a Mercedes-Benz, a Mercedes-Benz has an independent suspension. The, the, the hands are independent. They can, if you step on something here, it's just this leg that, do, did I go up? I didn't go up. Did I go up? The twin cap on the other hand is like this. If you, if it steps on something, it goes like this here. 
<laughs> Why? Because if there's a dust bomb. Are you sure you're getting this? So I would go and I would I would go up the hills, go into the ditches with the Pajero. Then now you drive to the rural areas and people are saying, ah, that road is bad. <laughs> the day I'm driving on that bad road, I am thanking the Lord, Lord, where was this road before? Because in the Pajero, the Pajero is actually saying to you, Mfundis, the way you abuse me, driving me on those roads, that's not what I was born for. This is what I was born for. Am I talking to myself here? I already rehearsed for a when the bad day came. Uh, are you sure you are getting this? So, you are a young lady, you are looking at yourself, you look at yourself at a mirror, uh, in a mirror, and say, you are Esther. You are, you are Anna. You are a woman of God. You are a woman of virtue. I see Proverbs 31 in you. There is greatness inside of you. Now, take your sis. Let me show you this. Let me show you this. And some dude comes and says, you know, that the way to then come on, walk on, move, zilla, we ask him, "Umu zola unga." Why? Because I've already rehearsed for a bad day. How did I rehearse for a bad day? You forgot already. By doing what? So the good. I'm rehearsing for a bad day. By rehearsing for a good day. I told that person on the mirror, you are a prophet, 31 sister. I looked at her and I said, you are Esther. Well, now, now you want to touch, touch me. We, 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 we have only been dating two weeks. Don't touch, touch me. Esther was being prepared for one year. All right, take your seats. Take your seats. Take your seats. Twelve months preparing for one night with the king. You zero preparation for thirty minutes. Now, if you got upset when I said you are an idiot earlier on, now you understand. You really, you really were an idiot. Are, are, are you sure you're getting this? You had, a, you had sex with someone whose address you didn't even know. He said his name was John. What about his surname? Uh, his surname, I think, um, I think, I think, I think, where does he work? He says he works at a feeling station. Which feeling station? Uh, the one in town. Oh, there are many feeling stations in town. Which one in particular in town? That way to, you are an idiot. You need to be redeemed from idiocy. You never rehearse for a bad day. How could you have rehearsed? You, know, you, you said you want to sleep with me. You want to sleep with Esther. The eunuch was the one bringing the makeups, the perfumes, the everything, he never even touched the Esther. When you don't look like you work for a king. In fact, there is nothing kingly about you because you wouldn't even ask me this if there was a king in you. Why? You are talking to Esther. Are you sure you understand this? You find yourself flirting, just throwing yourself all over the place. Esther has never been seen anywhere near you. You don't know her. If you knew her, you'd be saying, you know what, I'm Esther's friend. 
<laughs> From a poor home, no father, didn't no mother, staying with an uncle, but yet conducted yourself with dignity. That excuse of yours of being an orphan, Ulilema. What did, what did being an orphan have to do with just going and having sex on the back seat of a car? Fall pregnant on a single bed. That's where you'll sleep the rest of your life. The power of preparation. <laughs> <laughs> a season of breakthrough cannot come on you by mistake a season of breakthrough comes on you because you are ready it comes on you because you are prepared it comes on you because you are expecting it if you saw the season passing by you would grab it and tell the season, hey, 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 hey. How are you going to pass? Uh, 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 uh. How are you going to pass by me? Are you sure you're understanding this? Please take your seats. Let's go. Let's finish. Number three. Operate your life on principle. Days will change, but principles remain the same. So operate your life on what? You are the one who must know the principles that you want to live by. I live by a principle of order, number one. I live by a principle of order. Number two, I live by a principle of excellence. So excellence covers a whole world. Order covers a whole world. When things are disorderly, they disturb me. Disorder disturbs me. And I'm not willing to coexist with disorder. Are you sure you're getting this? So those principles have allowed me to simplify my life. Order means when you come to me and you start talking, and what you are saying doesn't make sense, I stop you. Uh, wait. Wait, wait. Okay. Wait. Start again. Then you start talk, 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 and say, ah, but you just say it. See now this that you are saying, Pella, how does it relate to this? Why? Because you are not making any sense. Sense is what? Order. One of my daughters is bipolar. She had accepted the condition, even though she says, I'm praying. When she opened her mouth and spoke to me, what I wanted to hear came out. So this year is like, this is, this is the fact. This is who I am. So I asked her and I said, what does the covenant say? You can come and sit down with me and tell me facts. You find this? I mean, I was born like this. Then the doctors discovered that. Then the, the, this, uh, and then I was in hospital for six months. And then, okay, I, 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 I've, I, I've heard all of that. All right, right. Don't, don't finish the story because it's too long. Stop there. What does the covenant say? I don't want you explaining to me your whole sub story. I want to know. So she said to me, no, you know, my body produces too much adrenaline, blah, 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 blah. I'm not disputing that. I accept that. 
But since when did someone come? Oh no, they discovered I have cancer. Oh, shame. <sighs> How long are they saying you have? They say you have six months. No, we'll make you as comfortable as possible. They're not undertakers. And the only way of dealing with that is to bring order. How do you bring the order? The covenant has no confusion. Is that making sense to someone? So number three, talk to me. Why? Because principles bring. I'm not hearing you at all. I'll give the example many of you hate. I can tell you right now, the Honda CRV has two scratches on the front fender. It has a rackle on the left side of the vehicle. The clutch is not proper. It requires to be pumped. The handbrake needs adjusting. It doesn't hold at all. I can tell you where the scratches are. I can go to the Atlas. When I was washing that Atlas on Saturday is when I saw the level of abuse that car has gone through. Uh, I was in absolute shock. Absolute shock. I can tell you what it looked like when I bought it. I can tell you that after a week when I looked at the car, one of the door handles was missing. Because someone without order took responsibility for the vehicle. I can tell you the state of every one of our vehicles. Everyone. I can tell you where there is a scratch. Scratch as in just a small scratch. I can tell you where there is a scratch on the upholstery of all the four cars if there is a scratch. If you don't live your life on principle, the last time I had the Atlas resprayed the whole car, what it's looking like right now it's shocking to me. The number of times it, it has been bashed. How, how, how do you go child at the top of a car? Is a car that high that you were passing underneath a bridge that was too low? How is that possible? Every fender has been hammered. How do I know that? A person of principle. You take my car and it comes back and there is something out of place. I will tell you the moment you bring it back. When I go into my office, if anyone has entered my office and touched anything, I'll tell you. Because everything in my office has got order. That's why I don't understand any of you who don't embrace order. Sometimes when I happen to catch a lift with people, you find they start cleaning the car. The car was good enough for you, but it's not good enough for me. Don't treat yourself like a pig. The conditions must now differ because you come to our home, we have no special plates. We have homes where they have plates. They use them once. They were bought in, I don't know when. It's only for special occasions. You know what I mean? It's for eating by strangers. No, no, no. We have visitors with dishing plastic plates. Why am I going to give value to someone who's just pitching at my house? 
once in six months. I'm the one who lives there. So I'm the one who must be having the... Are, are you sure you're understanding this? It's like subscribing for Wi-Fi just in case you have visitors. <laughs> but when you have a Puma, who's your time to hit data, who's seven seat data, in Wi-Fi, we clearly, I'm a visitor. <laughs> Live your life on what? Uh, on principle, not on principles. On principle. It's, it's, it, it, it's one overarching word. Principle. That's why when you say principles, uh, when you make it plural, that's why you say, oh, look who right. You, you, you're coming to church, you are, you are looking all, all nice, nice. You are... You know, your perfume, you now go and to open the door, you have to lift it up, muscle it up, pull it locus, and then the seeds, first of all, you are living on principles. This principle is not important. The important one is how people view you, you know. <laughs> if we came to your house right now, what would we see? Number four, think, act, and live at the level of your success. Watch, watch, watch. Think, act, live at the level of your, when is your success? Right now. Watch, watch. <laughs> I'm with this person, this person walks into the office, this person is a commissioner of oaths. Person said, uh, how, how may I help you? And they took out papers and just handed them. I said, are you needing these, what? Certified. Hmm. I said to this girl, Mdanam, at your age, what language is that? Because English is yes. Ndebele is yebo. Gumbe ye. Ye is short for yebo. In Shona, it's ehe. O, hongu, o, ndicho. So the person who was doing the certifying then says, you know what you, what you are certifying? Do you know what you are certifying? Graduation certificates. This is a graduate. And I said, Mtanami, you are going to attend an interview where that response will immediately disqualify you. They are looking for a communications officer at an embassy. Would you like some tea? Eh? You are going to be talking to presidents of countries. <laughs> they got to phone. Is that the embassy of Zimbabwe? <laughs> so immediately, your entire life is going to be washed away. Is anybody getting this? Think. At the level of your what? I'm not going to succeed tomorrow. Tomorrow is manifestation. Today is preparation. Are you sure you're getting this? Please take your seats. Let's go. I want to show you this. I want to show you this. Watch this. So... <laughs> During the government of national unity, opposition uh, leader, Prime Minister Twangirai, went around several countries, uh, Germany, the United Kingdom, uh, the United States, if I'm not wrong. And in every country, you were supposed to be taught the protocol. If you are walking, with the head of state, which side do you walk? 
when you get there and now to speak into, to do the press conference, you don't just select which microphone. In the United States, the left one, which is the right one of the audience, is always the American president. When you are inspecting a guard of honor, where do you walk? And what do you do when you have... So, there is, you know, the blank. So, there is a way in which this is a head of state. Right? And then, there is a way of turning in order to receive the whatever, the salute or the what's his name from the guy who is the, the top brass there. Normally, they will then salute the head of state. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. My brother was not ready. My brother was not ready. The places my brother was saluting people, he should, he should be saluting. <laughs> was not ready. That's why every government has a person called head of protocol. Your responsibility is always to be ready. Are, are you sure you're getting this? Your responsibility always be because you don't know when opportunity will come. How many of you, okay, let me, let me just out of interest. How many of you in the church here, there was a job you had from either from your workplace or somewhere, and you thought of someone, then found out they didn't have the qualifications. Has it happened to anyone here? Raise, raise, raise your the hands. <laughs> Should I put them down? What happened? Opportunity. <laughs> Came to no preparation. Do you know what was happening before that time? That person was in prayer, fasting. Lord, I pray for a breakthrough in a job. The breakthrough came. Were they ready? No. Not every doctor is going to be a millionaire. Hello? And not every thief is going to get away with it. Some are in jail now. You see them walking with leg irons. You are driving in an S-Class now. You are at the back of a P-1600. Hey, when? When all complain, all the people come. Eh, hey, kulunkulu baba. Eh, hey, kulunkulu baba. Now we can test. Person has several Land Rovers, uh, Range Rovers, S classes, and all sorts of luxury vehicles. You are being carried at the back of a B1600. When you get to the place now, the police, the say they are not even helping you to get out of the car. <laughs> Do you know where the problem was? Preparation. You could have been wealthy without stealing. You were a minister already. You had access to things other people cannot even dream of. How is it possible for a human being to have more than 1,000 properties? How is it possible? A man who are working hard are looking to buy a a, a, a 200 square meter stand which is going to when are you on half the country preparation preparation
if Zuma is watching this live stream, he's beating up his protocol. Why didn't you let me meet this guy a long time ago? Because Zuma's life hasn't even begun to change. About four, three, four weeks ago, I'm speaking to my son. He said, no, 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 no. He's got his guys. I said, son, in politics, there are no permanent loyalties. In politics, there is permanent hunger. Right? The following, Ten provinces voted after you remember Kasukwere was going to be kicked out. Ten provinces unanimously voted that Kasukwere must not be voted out. Few months later, ten provinces unanimously voted. That's politics. No permanent loyalties. Lastly, are you learning something? We said what? Think, act, and live at the level of your character is developed before collection. Character is developed before others were collecting before that character. Jablan Spanda said, the presidency cannot be sexually transmitted. You kicked him out of the party. Now, why did you why did you kick the president out? Because he wanted to transmit the So you should go back to Stablansman and apologize. <laughs> what am I talking too much politics today? I'm <laughs> doing I need to look for him and talk to him. The last time we were talking, we said, ah, so. Yes, I'm fundis, no, man. We have one of them to so I'm fundis. Gaba, right tongue, I'm fundis. I said, no, I hear you, my brother. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> but what can I do? <laughs> Me, I can't tell the tanks to go on your behalf. <laughs> he who has the tanks has the presidents. <clears throat> Lastly, number five. <clears throat> no, we haven't gone to number five. That's number four. All right. Number five, do not write your own notes and your own order. All right, number five. Number five is go back and start afresh every day. You are never too prepared for greatness. Okay, how do I do that? Watch this. So, I want to live by principle of love. But that person offended me. I was upset on Monday. I can't be upset on Tuesday. Do you know why? Because on Tuesday, I've got to go and start. Are you sure you're getting this? You know people who live in bondage because there is a what would say there is bad blood? Me, I don't have bad blood. I've got Jesus' blood in my veins. If 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 your blood is bad, the doctors will tell you you're going to die. Are you sure you're getting this? So when there is bad blood, you're walking. The other person is walking. Suddenly, you see something this side here. Something starts interesting you, and 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 you. When you're not living in, in bondage, 
you see the person coming, you go closer to them. I am not going to give you the satisfaction of behaving the way you think I, I'm going to behave. I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm going to come and I'm going to greet you. You sure you're getting this? I mean, today I got into a lift. Other people came in, got in. You know, lift, let, let me teach you this. Always take charge. Walk into a lift, greet everyone. How? You are in charge. They are not responding to everyone. Everyone in the lift who talks is addressing you. You enter aeroplane or intercap. May let's balance again. You enter aeroplane or intercap. Before you sit down, greet the person sitting next to you. Hi, how are you? Huh? I'm, I'm sure today we're going to have a great trip. Oh, I mean, we the last week, put out in hands. No, 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 don't worry. You're with me today. You'll be fine. <laughs> don't keep quiet. I, I shared with you, I was flying to Lagos go in my seat number I sit here and there is this brother on the window and next one it's a three seater it was a three was a three 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 I think if I'm not wrong so <laughs> sitting here getting there when I got into the aircraft Brother's reading his Bible. So I got in. How, how are you? Yeah, fine. Doors closed, so I know no one is coming. So, you know, we shouldn't crowd when there is an empty chair. So I moved to the aisle seat. Here sitting this a brother, a sister, a brother. <laughs> and this brother here, the Bible brother, the unfriendliest guy you have ever met in your life. Any day, give me a witch, a prostitute, someone. We can talk. A religious person is a totally different story. This guy was not even interested in talking. I mean, his response was basically, listen, I'm busy. Don't talk to me. You have this brother, you have this very loud sister. So, as the Lord would plan, we hit turbulence. So, they are drinking their castles and castle light. You, you know that there's a difference between castle and castle light. Right. If you drink castle light, your, your sins are not as big <laughs> as castle. It's for, it's for light sins, you know, small sins. Right. So, <laughs> so they are drinking there, and then we hit turbulence. Bang! The aeroplane. Oh! Oh, 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 chineke, chicken. Chineke. Prayers immediately. The one thing about Nigerians, uh, they don't play. They don't play. The castles were packed for a while. Prayer went on in the aeroplane. There was one person not praying. I think anyone who saw me just knew, that's a witch that. It's a witch. What was there to pray about? I was going to Lagos. Did you get this? I was going where? I was not going to DRC or Kenya. Or, 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 no, I was going to Lagos. So I had no, I had no doubt in my heart I was going to Lagos. So hey, people prayed. People prayed. People prayed. Then when the plane landed, 
the praise and worship that began. <laughs> Even the this guy here was smiling. So, number five. You are never too prepared for greatness. Go and restart again. You wake up in the morning. When the Lord turned again our captivity, we were like them that were dreaming. Father, I thank you. This, is a, this goes on during the whole day. I thank you because I've entered into my time of breakthrough. How do I know that? I know that because my foot, which had started swelling, is not swelling anymore. And I know when it started. It started on Monday. So, I have no issues. I understand all these things that suddenly just came from every direction. There is this year, there is that year, there is that there, there is that there. I knew what the purpose was. I'm not that cheap. And I don't sell out that easily. This is my time of breakthrough. And nothing, nothing, nothing can take it from me. Okay, so write this down quickly. The power of breakthrough. Example number one, David. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 26. David spoke to the man who stood by him saying, what shall be done to the man who kills this Philistine? Now, this is a guy who has challenged Israel 40 days. No one has taken him up on his offer. All right? So, we are going to jump from verse 26. Are you still here? Verse 33. Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him for you are but a youth. And he is a man of war he started fighting when he was your age. And David said unto Saul, Say, your servant kept his father's sheep. There came a lion. Then another day, there came a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. He didn't corner me. I went out after him I killed him and delivered it out of his mouth. When he tried to rise up against me, I caught him by his beard and I killed him. Watch. The worst lion. Two instances. A lion with cubs. But male lions are not really, they don't really do much of father. Male lions don't do fathering. That's a mother's job. And he says, I caught him by his. So it wasn't a. Have you got that background now? Let's go back now. Let's go back again. as he talked, verse 23, behold, there came up a champion, the Philistine of God, Goliath by name out of the armies of the Philistines, and spoke according to the same words, and David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the men, fled for him and were so afraid. And the men of Israel says, have you seen this man? That is come up surely to defy Israel. Has he come up and he shall be <laughs> You know what the king said? That the man who kills him, the king will give him riches and will give him his daughter. Make his father's house free. That means no tax, no zimra, no zinara, no, you, you don't pay, no utilities, no nothing. David said, <laughs> what, what did you say? He said, I said, the man who kills him, the king will give him his daughter. David said, you are lying. 
You're lying. You are come with me. So I'm paraphrasing. You think I'm... Uh, um, and David spoke to the man that stood by him saying, what shall be done to them? Now, now he is asking because his head, it, it's not that he didn't hear. He said, what shall be done to the man that kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? You see, there is a question mark. Hey, confirm with me. What did you say? Hey, I didn't hear you properly. Repeat it again. It was repeated. Now, many of you have grown up believing David was such a, a mighty man. And they rose up a giant. And David said, I call not against my country. <laughs> it had nothing to do with the country. David's motivation was the reward. It's in your Bible, don't you? The king is going to make him very rich. David said, you can't be serious. Then the king will make him his son-in-law. He is going to be Simbatikore. Is it Kore? You'll be a Simba. I said, and then you will be no more paying taxes. taxes. David Jump said, Keep okay. Are you really serious? They said, Yes, we are serious. Ah, David said, No, say it again. As they were saying, the elder brother came. But, ah, 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 ah. Who called you to come and watch the battle? David said, Which battle? <laughs> Since I came, I haven't seen any fighting going on here. The motivation was the. Let me ask you this. How many of you have seen those scholarships and bursaries advertised in the paper? Almost everyone. Put down your hands. How many of you are on a bursary and a scholarship that has been advertised in the paper? Canadian Daniel. You want to go and pay fees when they are there in the paper. How many of you are paying fees for university or something or any course you are doing? Raise up your hands. Why are you paying when they are there in the when they are bursaries and scholarships? Because you are not prepared. Lack of preparation precludes you from claiming the reward. Why was David excited? David is looking at this guy. He saw because the guy came out and then David is looking at this guy. A bear, by the way, when a bear stands up, a bear stands up to be about three meters. You, David is looking at this guy and said, this guy doesn't have the bite force of a bear. And He's a coward. He's got someone holding his shield in front of him. Ndoka Rovak. The other said, no, I read it. Ndoka Rovak. No, you don't understand. I can Ndoka Rovak. How does a person who is not a member of the military convince the military to take him to the commander? Can you go to Brady Barracks today and there is a problem and you end up in the officer commanding's office? David said, I'm going to see the king. Take me to him. I'm going to kill that guy. Eventually they thought, look, all the men are afraid. You know what? Just to divert attention. Take this boy, let him. What are we losing? Because tomorrow it might be heard that there was a boy who wanted and we will all get fired. Mambi said, When the boy, the king said, Ah, son. Not you. Why was 
David so convinced. Did you read anywhere in the Bible it says David gambled his life? Now there are some things which, which, which are not there in the Bible. If that army was like most armies of the world, the men took bets. Men took bets. Guys, I say this boy will be dead within three minutes. Other one said, no, 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 no. I say one minute. I'm willing to put $50 for three minutes. All of them lost their money. Because no one would bet for David. What is it they didn't know? He was prepared. Breakthrough time. Just like in the past, we have had different things happening within the ministry. Some of you, they came, they went, you remained where you were. What do you think? Because God didn't like you. God does not discriminate. You have to discriminate yourself. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor, tribalism, must see food. Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Are you still here? If you are here, say I'm here. Matthew 25 from verse 1. The Bible gives us the story of the ten virgins. What was the thing here? Kingdom of heaven is likened unto ten virgins who took their lamps. They went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise. Five of them were foolish. Now there's a problem there. Verse 1 I love. Is anybody still here? Okay. There are ten virgins. Each one had their own lamp. They were all virgins. They had lamps. There was the master. It's good. It's nice. Verse 2. There is a bit of a problem. Five of them were? Five of them were? How do we know? Now we don't know the person who's writing this year maybe has got tribalism. You could be calling the foolish ones the foolish because they were in Debele and the wise ones wise because they were Shona. We don't know. Are you sure? Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Let Just bring another good chair. Don't focus on that. All right? Now, then he starts defining for us because we don't know the person who's writing this year. Maybe he's a member of the G40 or of the Lacoste. We don't know. Because when you are just reading, we still don't know what the motivation is. Are you sure you are? They that were foolish took their lamps so far so good and took but the wise took So now we understand the qualifications for the foolishness. The definition of foolish and of wise was what? Preparation. I almost asked a question, but I'm not going to ask it. I wanted to say how many of you got married when you're not ready, but I'm not going to ask it. <laughs> first time in history first time in history when men are getting married to women who can't even cook first time in history when women are getting married to men with no clue what an electrical circuit is like <laughs> It never happened when we were growing up. When we were growing up, part of, I don't remember what education it was, you learned electrical secretary, what a plug was like. <laughs> well, you would take, you fool there, 
you look, sometimes the wires have bent. Sometimes, you, if it was a 13 amp, the fuse has blown. Then sometimes we would bridge the fuse. These days, video games and no knowledge of anything. One thing I keep saying, if you can find a student's companion for your children, buy, I don't care how old it is, a parent's, if you can find, the book is called The Student's Companion. Buy it. Give it to your children. Children who are here, some of them in college, they don't even know how many... How many nations are there in Africa? Don't answer. <laughs> Do you know the capitals of those nations? Which, which nations are in Southern Africa? Can you name them from the South going to East Africa and going to... If you can't... You need the student's companion. You are scope donor. I get to talk to people in America. So we'll be talking on the phone and say, hey, you know, with this year, uh, which one prophet? I say, isn't it yesterday or this morning? This happened in such a place. Oh, no, I, I don't know. No, I don't know. I refuse for any foreigner to know more about Zimbabwe than me. Many foreigners, I know more about their countries than they do. No, do you Qualification for wisdom. I didn't hear you. I can't hear you. You know what's going to happen this weekend? If you're not prepared, the master will come and he'll lock the door. Quickly, two examples of lack of preparation. Saul, 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 17. Rather, verse 7. We'll start in verse 7. I don't, I don't want to take time uh, talking about that. I said, what? 1 Samuel. Talk to me, someone. Chapter and verse 7. Here's the most amazing thing. Saul is the son of a very rich man. Alright? The father's donkeys go missing. You could one with the what will a problem The servant then suggests, listen, we've been going around looking for these donkeys. You know what? This is in fact uh, he says, Your father. No, Saul was the one who said, My father is going to get uh, upset, um, worried for us now. He'll stop worrying about the lost donkeys and they start worrying for us. So the servant said, why don't we go? I understand the prophet. Saul didn't know. Where the prophet Samuel was. Prophet Samuel was the judge. Meaning the equivalent of a president today. The president is in the seat, don't even know. But you have to my intersection. But it doesn't work. I don't know how to get out of the intersection. But it doesn't work. I don't know how to get out of the intersection. You passed at 7 a.m. They are standing there. Lunchtime, they are standing there. 4 o'clock, they are standing there. But you don't know. Then the seven said, let's go and ask the man of God. Because he can see. Are you sure you are hearing me? What did Saul say? Son of a rich man. So he lunched that day. Was Ponsoir. Do wrong the remun. Do I not my weevils, Muzanuya? My weevils. I have not had gamma talks. <laughs> How is it possible that the 
a son. The equivalent of a prince didn't have a cent on him. He guess who pay? Uh, guess because he said you cannot appear before the prophet empty-handed. The servant then took the money that he had and gave it to him. We are not even told whether he repaid it. <laughs> Knowing who's all of another my politicians, I'm not going to pay for it. That's the first example. That's why Saul's kingship was an outright disaster from the beginning. Lastly, go to Samson. Judges chapter 14. Samson has a kulum. No one could know Samson double like a limbo piece. And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman. <laughs> That's a defining moment in his life. <laughs> I mean, the Bible does not write unnecessary details. His defining moment, he went down to Timnath and he saw a woman. <laughs> Hello? Then after that, he went to Gaza and he saw a woman. Then third time, he went again and he saw another woman. Delilah. The three most significant contributions he made to Israel. Okay. When he killed the lion, was it for the nation? I didn't hear you. Just for himself. When he killed those Philistines to rob them of their suits to pay for his quarry, I studied. Was it for the country? It's beginning to sound familiar, isn't it? <laughs> when he lifted up the city gates and went and put them on top of the mountain so that no one would ever take them and come and put them back, who was it for? Was it for the nation? What was the big thing with Samson? No preparation. The only judge in Israel who never formed a government, no advisors, no, no, no elders, to come and sit down with him, he operated the government from his house. Are you sure you're getting this? No preparation. I was thinking today about our country. Sometimes my brain does some gymnastics. And... Yes, again. We still haven't even, we haven't fixed anything as yet. We are hoping we will fix Okay, we dropped fuel today, which is a good start, but it's an absolute joke. We have the most expensive fuel in the sub-region. Fuel should not have dropped to a dollar thirty-five. It should have dropped to eighty cents. What's happening with all the subsidy they are taking on fuel? The president is taking a delegation of thirty-seven people to Davos, costing the country more than $1 million. South Africa, whose economy is a hundred times bigger than ours, has a delegation half that of Zimbabwe. What is it called? Prepper? Because everything in Zimbabwe, we view it for Manje Mwanawa, Mwanawa CC. My guru. Preparation. The reason you and me succeed when we succeed is because opportunity comes flying by and sees what? And it comes and a lens. When, ladies and gentlemen, opportunity is a bird that is always flying. Are you sure you're getting this? This is Noah's ark. 
He sent the dove out, came back because it had nowhere to land. Then one day it came back with the branch of an olive tree. And he knew the water had subsided. He knew there was now an opportunity to go out of the ark. The ark was only good enough for the flood, not for living in for the rest of your life. We're going to talk, I'm going to speak into the issue of the grace for breakthrough. Um, but I'm asking you, I've deliberately taken a long time. But I'm asking you, if you let this walk past you, my, my biggest concern about this year is the way God structured the year for us. That January would be the, the month the foundations. And if those foundations are lacking in your life or in your marriage, in your family, in your children, there is going to be unnecessary pain. We're going to pay prices we didn't need to pay. Are we getting this? We have cars now which if the wheel gets deflated, the car can pump its own wheels by itself. They're called self-inflating tires. When you have a self-inflating, you, you don't go around worrying about having a puncture. The reason the foundations were set or are being set, when we go each month, has got its own purpose. Are you sure you're getting this? And what I see is I mean, see, those of you that were here on Monday, you can't explain it, but you know something happened. I, 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 I mean, I mean, am I the only one? There was just something that it just had to happen. I never understood why the Lord had me just do a sudden call up. After the prayer meeting, then I understood. All right. I'm going to give us a few minutes to go and deal with our hearts. Don't leave. Don't let anything remain in your life that threatens your preparation. Is this making sense? The reason you haven't seen me talking about Saturday's meeting. Not even on Sunday. Because I said it mustn't be announced. It's because I don't want any people coming here who are not part of the prayer movement. Are you sure you are getting this? My fear right now is what is happening with that oil. That oil, remember, is just specific for this year. It's not all the oil that remains, the Lord said to me, all the oil that remains from this is to be taken, sealed in a box, and locked away in, this, in, the, in the strong room until he talks to me about it. That's how dangerous this is. This daughter of, of ours in the UK is going to be traveling four hours on Saturday. She already found Juanita. She will travel four hours so that they can go and watch the service together and Juanita can then release the oil of breakthrough on her. She sent me her medical report. 
I don't know how many pages it is. After I had gone through those pages, at the bottom, it was written to be continued. It's a medical report. She is, or I don't know on how many types of medications. She was listing them by name. This one is for this, taken so many times. That one is, I have a, a list, it's like looking at a pharmacy catalog. I'm waking on her right now to prepare her so that when that oil comes upon her head that the doctors who have been watching over her are going to send her for endless tests because what they thought they knew is not what they are going to see. Quiet prayer. 